time here now. It is Friday, November 20th. We're here for Yoga Flow. Those of you online, we're going to start lying down today. So there's about a minute until 9 o'clock. So if you'd like, go ahead and stretch out. Have a strap handy if you are at home. Um, have a strap for later on in class. And if you're on the floor already, if you feel like you want to bend your knees and put your feet on the floor, do instead of stretching out, right? So if it feels better on your back to put your feet on the floor and let your back release that way, do. And just start to release now into your breath. So closing your eyes and letting yourself just really feel the firmness of the ground underneath you. And feel your breath coming in to the belly. So feeling your belly rise and expand as you inhale. You can even let your hands rest on your belly if that helps you. And if you can easily come into those three-part breaths, inhaling into your belly, then into your ribs, then all the way up into your chest. And on your next exhale, bring your right knee in towards your chest. You can hold behind your right thigh or clasp there on your shin below your knee. Flex through both your feet. And then let the leg gently, the right leg, press into your hands a little bit. Let your arms come a bit straighter. So finding that natural curve in the low back. And we will switch now to bring the left leg in and stretch the right leg down long. Flex through both your feet. Again, see if you can let your leg press back into your hands. Let your arms come straighter and enjoy coming into finding that sense of natural curve in the low back there. And then let's bring both feet to the floor with our knees bent and let your knees just come a tiny little bit from side to side so that you're just rocking from the top of one hip to the other. Just releasing there. And then we'll come on back up with the knees up into center. Let's cross our right ankle above our left knee, coming into that figure four, flexing through the right foot. Now, whether you bring the left leg in and clasp behind your left thigh or not here is up to you. You can keep the foot on the floor if you want. If both feet are up, flex through both feet. Let yourself release here. If you want, you can stretch your left leg up long. If that feels good, you can release into stretching into a long left leg a little bit there, feeling the back of the leg. And then we'll release the left foot on back down. If it's up, we're going to uncross and switch and go to the other side. So crossing that left ankle above the right knee. Again, whether you decide to lift that right leg up and draw it in, holding behind your right thigh or not is up to you. If both feet are up, flex through both feet. Wake up through the hips here. And again, if you want to extend your right leg up long, you can. It's not necessary to do that. You want to feel a little more there in the back of the leg, do. And then we'll lower the right foot again on back down to the floor. Uncross the legs here now. Bring your arms on out beside you. Separate your feet wider on the mat. 
almost to the outside edges if you can. Kind of center yourself there. And then let your knees come from one side to the other here. So how far down towards the ground you want to bring your knees is up to you. And you can let that the hip rise way higher up off the floor if you want to descend the knees down lower. Or you can just barely shift the knees side to side. And then come on back into center. Walk the feet on back in closer together. Let's bring our right knee into our ch chest and stretch our left leg long. And now bring your left hand over to that right knee and draw the right knee over towards the left into a little bit of a twist. You can go as deeply as you want. You can release the right hip off the floor and go farther if that feels good. Keep the right shoulder released down towards the ground. And then we'll come on back into center with that knee. We're going to switch to bring the left leg in, left knee in, and stretch the right leg long. Bring the right hand across to that left knee now. Stretch your left arm out on the floor beside you and draw the knee over to the right. Again, how deep you go into this twist, up to you. And then we'll come on back into center. Bring both knees in towards the chest now. And see if you can let the knees circle, keeping them circling in the same direction here. So the knees are fairly close together. You can have your right hand on your right knee, your left hand on your left. And then stop and reverse directions, letting yourself circle in the other direction there. And then come back into center. Let's stretch our legs up in the air now, like you're putting footprints on the ceiling. And then let one leg come forward and one leg come back. Now, you can go as low as you want with that bottom leg. If you want to engage your belly a little more and let the leg come down lower towards the ground, you can. Just make sure you stay very stable, keeping that little bit of a natural curve in your low back so that you're not having the back pop up and down off the floor, right? So you're really staying stable there, using the belly, using the low back, letting yourself wake up a little bit here. And then we'll finish off. We're going to bring our feet on back down to the floor and bring your arms down alongside you. And let's just press into our feet. Rise up into a little bit of a bridge pose. So roll your shoulders under a little bit. Let yourself, it doesn't have to be high. Feel your feet in the floor. Really make sure you're not rolling to the outside edges of your feet. Feel your thighs engaging. And then we'll lower back down to the floor. And... To come up to sitting, there are lots of choices. You can roll to one side and let yourself come up. You can roll to your back and come on up if you want into sitting that way. Let yourself come into how feels good for you. If you're okay to be cross-legged, do. If you need to stretch your legs out, do. And grab a blanket if you need to, to sit up on top there. And then lengthen upward. Let your fingertips lightly come on down to the floor. And let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. And then we'll reverse and inhale our hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. And just sit in seated mountain here for a breath or two. Enjoy feeling how your back feels after starting there on the floor. And then we'll flex through our feet. If we're cross-legged, press down into the outside edges of our feet, and we're going to come forward into a seated forward bend. You're more than welcome to stay way up high and use your fingertips on the floor or walk further out with your hands, letting yourself fold forward more if that feels okay to your back. Some of you may even want to go ahead and fold over, letting your head hang at the end there. That's optional, really paying attention to how your own back feels.
One more breath. And then we'll slowly walk ourselves on back up. And let's switch the cross of our legs. If we're cross-legged, bring the other leg in front here now. And again, flex through both the feet. Let your fingertips lightly touch the floor here. And as you come on forward, press into the outside edges of the feet if you're cross-legged. If you kind of need to adjust the way you're crossed in your legs, do it so that you're okay, you're comfortable as you come on a little bit forward or more. And again, let your head release if that's okay for your back. One more breath. And then we'll slowly walk ourselves back up and bring your fingertips again out onto the floor beside you. And as you exhale now, draw your chin downward. Let your head come forward. Release the back of your neck there. And then we'll rise the head on up so that you look forward again. And let's tilt our head to the right, right ear towards your right shoulder. And then from here, just let yourself roll down a little bit. Imagine the head, the weight of the head leading you rolling sideways through your spine. And only go as far as feels good. Feel that weight of the head. Let yourself release your neck there. And then we'll slowly roll back up. Let your head be the last thing that comes to be up on top. And then we'll tilt our head the other way, left ear towards your left shoulder. Let the weight of the head kind of carry you down on that side. And just let it feel really good. You'll feel your side waist open through the right side there of the body, through the ribs, the right ribs. And then we'll slowly bring ourselves on back up. And let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come on down together in front of our hearts. Enjoy a breath here, lengthening up through the crown of your head. And then we'll release our arms on down. We're going to come around towards our hands and knees. And so you know if you do not want to be on your knees, don't be. Right? So you can get a blanket. And you can put a blanket underneath your knees. Take your time now. Let yourself get adjusted there. Hands under your shoulders, however you need your hands to be. Fists if you need. Blanket under if you need. And then take your time, let your head hang for a second, and just turn the chin a little bit towards one side at a time. Just let it release. Let the head hang heavy. And then come on back to center. Look down there between your hands. Take a nice inhale. And on the exhale, drawing up into your cat pose. And on your inhale, let yourself move the tailbone back and up and move back through into your cow. So take your time here now, moving through with your own breath. If you like staying in cat or cow, you're more than welcome to stay in either pose. And for a couple of breaths, let the body adjust. And finish off the one you're on, or the one you're headed towards there. Come on back to neutral spine. Let's send our right foot behind us on the floor. Curl your toes under. Press into your heel. Now, if you can, lift your left knee up a little bit. Press into the top of the toes there. And then bring that knee back down. And we're going to bring that right knee in and stretch the left leg behind us. Curl the toes under. Open up the back of the leg. Now, it's optional whether you want to lift up your hips and lift that right knee up, pressing into the top of the right foot there or not. You don't need to. And then we'll come on back down, bring our knees on back under us, and let's bring our left foot forward and come on into our first lunge here. So coming on forward with that left foot, lifting the right knee up and coming into your lunge. And take your time, whatever height you want your hands to be, on the blocks or the floor, Remember, you have all those heights on your blocks. If your wrists start to bother you, kind of change the way your hands are, whether you come to fingertips or fists or flat hands on the blocks. 
And we're going to switch legs. So whether you like to step forward or back, take your time coming to the other side. And draw your shoulders down away from your ears. Enjoy finding the length here through the body. Good. And we're going to switch again. So if you want to lift up a little bit, you can either bring your hand or your forearm to your thigh. You can bring both hands up if you want to, up above your knee. Give yourself support there. And then we'll come on down, and we're going to switch and go to the other side. So again, take your time. Remember that little bit of space between the feet helps get the hips a little more easily adjusted. If you want to lift up a little bit, you can. And then we'll bring our hands on down and step forward, coming on into standing forward bend. So be mindful here. Let your head hang. Let your neck release. Just feel nice, easy, full, deep breaths now. And, you know, use whatever support you need. Hands on the blocks, elbows above the knees if you need to. Feel the feet in the floor. Think about your arches lifting up. In fact, lift your toes up. See if you can really feel the arches lifting up, the four corners of the feet reaching down. And then softly lower the toes on back down. One more nice full breath here. And then we'll bend our knees, bring our hands to our hips. We're going to come on up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. So find your mountain pose, whatever you need to do. Sometimes just walking a little bit in place feels good. You know, getting your feet just the right distance apart. Where when you start to come on forward with your gaze, it's very easy feeling the hands come gently together. Let your elbows soften down. So feel the sense of growing from your feet up, right? You're rooted through your feet equally. Thighs are going to start to gently lift upward. Hips come over ankles, shoulders over hips. And as your gaze comes out, whether your eyes are open or closed, out as though you're looking at the horizon. Just enjoy feeling the space around you. Imagine you're being supported by the air all around you. And as we unfold our arms on down beside us, we'll inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on the exhale, we're going to come forward into our standing forward bend. On your next inhale, let yourself find a nice long back. Lengthen out whether you put your hands on your blocks or your shins or the floor. And we're going to step the right foot back and come into lunge here. And inhale. Exhale into your downward facing dog pose. So first dog of the day. Take your time. Walk if you need to walk. Bend both your knees if you need to. Hands can be on the floor of the blocks. Elbows hug gently towards each other. Reach back through your tailbone. And see if you can imagine being very equal through the sides of the body. Remember, it is fine to bend your knees in dog. Focus on the length of your spine here. And on the next inhale, we'll come on out to plank. Nice and strong. Really engage your belly. Feel your sit bones reaching for your heels. And we're going to lower down to the mat. You're welcome to put your knees down first or come through a full push-up. And coming on down, we're going to slide onto our forearms with our elbows under our shoulders into Sphinx pose. Bringing your gaze there between your hands, opening up through the front of the body. A gentle engagement in the belly. Try not to overly grip in the buttocks, but feel this little engagement in the belly, protecting your low back there. One more breath. And then we'll come on back down. We're going to make our way back to down dog from here. Whether you go through that half or full push-up, totally up to you, or back to your hands and knees and back to dog. Spread your fingers wide. Feel your elbows hugging towards each other. 
We will bring our right foot forward from here to come into lunge, and you can put your left knee down to get there. And then we'll come on back into standing forward bend. Feet, hips distance apart, parallel. Let yourself release wherever you can be. So if you need to use support, do. If you like to hold your elbows, you can just gently reach up towards your elbows. And let's let our hands come on up to our hips from here. Bend our knees and rise on up and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. And then reversing the hands, the inhaling straight up through the midline. On the exhale, open the arms and fold forward into that standing forward bend. Let your inhale help you find a nice flat back. And we'll step the left foot back to find lunge. And inhale. Exhale into downward facing dog pose. Walk your dog a little bit here now and really take your time. Let yourself enjoy the stretch through the back of that long leg before you switch. Keep the elbows hugging towards each other. Good. On the next inhale, we'll come on out to plank. Again, nice and strong. And we're going to lower down. Knees first if you need. Elbows right by the ribs. And let's come into a little cobra. Now, don't go high. Let yourself float your hands up for a second. Make a little loose fist with your hands so your hands come into releasing there a little bit there. And then go ahead and bring your hands back down by your chest. Now, whether you want to lift up a little bit higher or press into your hands and come up even higher with elbows hugging in, it's up to you. Staying low if you need. Finding where you can open through the front of the body. And then we'll come on back down, and we're going to make our way back to downward facing dog pose from here. However you need to get there. And this time, left foot comes forward to lunge, so you can put the right knee down if you need to get there. And then we'll come on back into standing forward bend. Right to your breath. So let your arms do whatever they want to do. You know, if you feel like you want to bring your hands up onto your back, do... If it feels good to hold your elbows or to put your hands behind your head, you know, sometimes clasping, interlacing your fingers and resting your hands at the back of the head there feels good. Just find what feels the best for you to be able to follow your breaths in and out. See if you can find those little spaces between your breaths. Feel it. At the end of your inhale, that little space or pause before you exhale. Good. One more nice, full, deep breath. And then we'll bring our hands up to our hips. We're going to press into our feet as we rise on up to standing. And inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. Let's bring our left arm over our right. Give yourself a hug. Let your elbows really melt down. And bring your chin down a little bit towards your chest. And then from here, start to sit back into chair pose. So let yourself shift your hips back. Torso comes forward. You can kind of feel the weight of your arms here. Look a little bit, maybe four feet in front of you there on the floor. And if you want to add the full eagle wrap, you can go ahead and send the backs of the hands towards each other and come into full eagle here with your arms and in your chair bottom here, right? So feel the feet equal in the floor. One more breath. And then press into the feet. Rise up. Now you can stay hugging or have your eagle wrap. Doesn't matter. Let yourself come on up all the way reaching up through the crown of your head. And then we'll unfold our arms on down beside us. Let's inhale the arms out into a T position. Flex your hands for a second. Let yourself feel the undersides of the arms. And then bring your right arm on top of your left. Give yourself a hug here. Let the elbows soften down. Bring your chin down for a second towards your chest. And then as you start to sit back into that chair, right, let your gaze come now a little forward of you. Kind of feel the weight. Almost feel like your elbows are hanging down there for a breath. 
And if you want to go ahead and send the arms into a eagle or half eagle or full eagle wrap, you can. You don't have to. You can stay hugging. Feet equal in the floor. Knees out over the center of the feet. Pressing into the feet, rising up. So if you're hugging, stay hugging. If you're in your wrap, see if you can come all the way up to standing. Really let yourself feel your tailbone reaching down between your heels. Make sure you're not tucking your tailbone forward. Good. And then we'll unfold our arms on down beside us. We're going to inhale both arms all the way out and up. And on the exhale, we're going to fold forward into standing forward bend. We're going to move with the breath here. Let your inhale lengthen out your spine. Exhale, right foot back into lunge. And inhale. Exhale into downward facing dog. Let your inhale carry you out to plank. And your exhale will lower you down. And inhale into your cobra of choice. And exhale back to down dog. Inhale. Exhale, right foot forward to lunge. And inhale. Exhale into standing forward bend. Bend the knees, rising up. Arms flowing all the way to the top. And on the exhale, folding forward. Let your inhale lengthen your spine. Exhale, left foot back to lunge. And inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let your inhale bring you to plank. Your exhale will lower you down. And inhaling into your cobra. Exhaling back, down dog. Inhale. Exhale, left foot forward to lunge. And inhale. Exhale into standing forward bend. Bend the knees, rising up, arms flowing to the top. And on the exhale, we're going to fold forward. Let your inhale lengthen your spine. We're going to come into down dog. Place your hands. You can walk. You can jump. Get into your down dog and wiggle around a little bit if you want to. Take your time now. Let yourself come back to your breath. Feel your elbows softly hugging in. Kind of feel like you're coming home to dog, really. Good. We're going to bring our left foot forward from here. And we're going to come up for warrior one. So you may want to have your blocks handy there in case you need them. You're getting your shoulders around square to the front of your mat. Now take your time to get the back foot solidly grounded, right? How far you have your feet apart doesn't matter. You want to be able to get your shoulders square. Perhaps this right hip pointer will come around and you'll be pretty square, but don't force it. Feel good in the back knee. Let your arms release on down beside you. And then just kind of swing your arms around a little bit. Yeah? Feel really solid in the core body. Feel the weight of your arms. Good. And then we're going to swing the arms forward, rise them up. Once they get up, clasp your hands, send your pointer finger up, hug your elbows in towards your face. Now, whether you add lifting up here at the base of the spine, rising your gaze up, is up to you. You can stay looking forward. You can let yourself feel almost like you have a bar at the base of your shoulder blades, and you're lifting up and over that. So the belly's really lifted. There's that length in the low back. Arms can be more forward if you need. One more breath here. And then we're going to release. We're going to bring the hands on down and find lunge here. So let yourself come into your lunge wherever you like, either hands on the floor or the blocks. And adding a twist, left hand to the left hip, we're going to draw that left shoulder up. Come on into your twist here. You can stretch the left arm up if you choose. And then we'll come on back into lunge. And from here, we'll walk around into a wide-legged forward bend. So take your time. You can get your blocks. You'll probably need to adjust your feet, trying to get your feet fairly parallel here. If you need blocks underneath your hands, use them. And then go ahead and bend a knee at a time. Take your time to... Really find that release through the inner thigh of the long leg. And then come on back into center. And from here, press the feet, bend the knees a little bit. And press the feet away from each other like you're trying to lengthen your mat with your feet. Feel your inner thighs melt their way behind you. And now keep length. Keep the hands out there in front of you so your back is long. 
Bring your left hand a little more to the midline, on a block if you want, or on the floor. That's up to you. And we'll bring our right hand up to our right hip, and we're going to draw the right shoulder up, coming into twist here. Finding a twist in the middle of the back. So trying to stay level there on your sacrum. The tendency is to want to drop into that left side. Try to keep level. And then come on back down with that right hand, more to the midline with the hand, left hand to the left hip, low back, and then rolling that shoulder up. Press the feet now gently away from each other. Your knees can be bent or straight. Lengthen out through the top of your head. And then we'll come on back down again. And now find a place in the pose here where you can be with your breath. Use your blocks if you need, under your forearms or your hands or your head. Now, if you like to rest your head on block or blocks, let yourself find that spot where your back feels okay and you can be with your own breath very easily. Feeling the breath, expanding the ribs in all directions. Let go through your jaw. Let your face be soft. One more nice, full, deep breath. And we are going to walk our hands on back out so we can walk back to that left foot to come on back into lunge. So coming back to your lunge, however you can get there, and we'll make our way back into downward facing dog pose. So once you're in your dog, come on out for a plank. Now whether you add a back bend here and how you do it is up to you. You can come to the plank and go back to dog. You can lower down through chaturanga, coming into an up dog if you choose. Or you can come into those kriyas where you come from down dog through plank to up dog. So, you know, you move how you want. Put your knees down and rest if you would rather. Whether you choose to do vinyasas or kriyas is up to you. And finish off the one you're on if you are working there. And let's come on around back to dog. Press equally back out of the hands. And we're going to, from this time, bring our right foot forward. And we're coming up for warrior one on the other side. So, again, you might want your blocks handy. Get yourself situated there again with that back foot. Just the distance you want. Remember, your feet can be kind of apart a little bit like they're on narrow railroad tracks. If that's better for your hips, or you can have your heels in a line, feel that back foot in the floor so you really don't want to roll to the inside of that foot. Feel the outside edge of the foot reaching down as well. And then again, see if you can let your arms kind of do this little moving. That's, there's no right or wrong. They can do whatever they want, right? You might even want your arms to starkle. Swing, let go, feel the weight of your arms. Feel that core body there holding you up. Good. Now get ready to swing those arms forward and rise them up. Clasp your hands, interlace your fingers, send your pointer finger up. Hug the elbows in a little bit. You can keep your elbows a little bent. You can keep the arms forward if that's better rather than by your ears. Whether you lift up again at that base of the shoulder blades is up to you. Inhaling up the front of the body. Exhaling down the back of the body. One more breath. And then we're going to release our arms on down. We're coming back to our lunge, remember. So you can use your blocks if you need under your hands, finding your lunge now. And we'll add that twist, bringing the right hand to the right hip, rolling that right shoulder up. Whether you add that arm up, straight up from your shoulder or not is up to you. Hand can stay down if it feels better for you. And then we'll release to come on back into lunge. And we're going to walk around into that wide-legged forward bend from here. So once you start walking, you get your feet set. Keep walking over towards your left foot. 
And then you can go as far as you want. You can shift your block a little bit. You can go all the way over to hold on to the outside of the foot or the ankle if you choose. Once you're as far as you want, bring your right hand on up to your right, I'm sorry, left hand on up to your left hip. And you may even want to roll your shoulder up a little bit. And then come on back through center. We're going to walk over to the right foot. And again, totally up to you. Stay out in front of the foot if you need, up on a block. Add the right hand when you're ready up to your hip. You can roll the shoulder up if you choose. And then we'll come on back down with the hand. Come on back into center. If you need to bend your knees one at a time here, do adjust your stance if you want, you know. Grab whatever you want for support to come into this pose again. So, you know, if you feel like you want to support yourself, forearms on blocks to get out of your hands, if you feel better to walk your hands back towards between your feet, you can let your hands be shoulder distance apart, hug your elbows towards each other, draw your shoulders away from your ears. Coming into the breath. Now see if you can find those little spaces between your breaths. The end of your inhale, the little space before you exhale. And the end of your exhale, so the little space before you inhale. Good. One more full deep breath. And we'll walk our hands on back forward. We're going to walk back over to our right foot and come on back into lunge. And we'll make our way back into down dog from here. Again, you're on your own. If you feel like putting your knees down, put your knees down. If you want to come through vinyasas or kriyas, you can. If you feel like you'd rather just stay in down dog. Good. And let's meet back in downward facing dog pose. And from here, we'll bring our left foot up in the air into a three legged dog. So you might want your feet to come a little closer together. Let the left leg lift up, turn the toes down towards the ground. And then we'll bring that left foot on forward. We're going to come up for warrior two this time. Have your blocks handy there by your foot. Let yourself take your time, line your heels up. And then rise your arms up into a wide open V, right? So let yourself, instead of lifting your shoulders up, really soften your shoulders down. Turn your pinkies towards each other a little bit. Feel the feet equal in the floor. Good. And then turn the palms away from each other as you lower your arms on down, turning your gaze to look out over the top of that left hand. Really reach back through the right hand, forward through the left. Remember, it's like energy is coming out through the tips of your fingers, right? Feel the feet pressing gently away from each other. Warrior two. Beautiful. We'll bring the right hand to the right hip. We're going to straighten our left leg out and bring our left hand down for triangle. Now, whether you put the hand on your shin or your, your calf or, I mean, your shin or your thigh or down onto a block is up to you or the floor. Draw your right shoulder up. Now, for a second, put your right hand behind you on your low back. Turn your palm out. Just stay there for a breath. Feel your thighs engaging upward. If you want to send that right hand more over towards the top of the left hip, you can. If you like coming into that release for your shoulder. And then start to lie the right arm just right there on the side of your body. Let it release. And then slowly, if your shoulder lets you, lift the arm on up, all the way up from the shoulder, turning the palm forward. You can look up if you feel good to do that, or you can look down if your neck bothers you. One more breath here. And then we're going to bend the left knee. We're going to come on back into warrior two. Press those feet away from each other as you come. 
going to come on back to lunge here, bringing our hands on down, releasing that heel directly behind you, and we'll make our way back to downward dog. Come to walking to the tops of the feet a couple of times. Pressing the top of your toes into the floor. Be mindful. Let it feel good. And then again, you can do some vinyasas or kriyas, or you can put your knees down and rest, or you can stay in dog and rest. Good. And then we'll meet back in down dog again. And this time, it's going to be the right foot that comes up in the air behind us, coming into three-legged dog. So adjust your stance. Right leg comes up, toes point down, elbows hug towards each other. Now zip up your belly. Imagine you're drawing your hip pointer bones towards each other. And then we'll bring that right foot forward. And we're coming on up for warrior two, remember? Lining up your heels, finding the alignment of that front knee. So really get the knee aligned there. Rise the arms up into that wide open V. Turn your pinkies towards each other. Take your time now. Feel equal between your legs. Feet all the way up through the legs into the hips, really. Turn the palms away from each other. Lower the arms on down. Bring your gaze out over the top of that right hand. Reaching equally back through the left hand, forward through the right. Good. Left hand is going to come down to your left hip. We're going to straighten the right leg out. Right hand is going to come on down. Triangle might be up above your knee with your hand. You may want to go down to your shin. You may want to grab a block or two. Remember, you can have the block up high. You can have two blocks stacked. You can let yourself really lengthen out through the torso here. He left hand is going to come behind you. Turn your palm outward. And if you want to slide that hand more down towards, you can even wrap your hand around your right thigh, upper thigh there if you want. Let yourself have one more breath. And then lay the arm down, left arm just resting right there on your side. And when it starts to float up, bringing the hand on up straight up from your shoulder, Feel the thighs lifting up towards the hips. If you want to turn to look up towards your hand, you can. Don't do anything that stresses your neck. And now we're going to bend that front knee. We're going to come on back into warrior two, pressing the feet away from each other as we come. And let's bring our hands down to find that lunge again. So really letting yourself release into lunge. And then come on back into down dog. Take your time. If you want to do a final vinyasa or kriya or two or three or four, you can do whatever you want to fit in here. You can rest. Put your knees down if you need any time. And then we'll meet back in down dog again. And from here, let's walk our feet wider on our mat, all the way to the outside edges if you can. And then bend your knees as you walk your hands back. Now, you may want to end up with your elbows above your knees and squat right there. Be supported so that you have a long back. Some of you may want to put your hands down to the floor and back behind your feet and wrap them to the outside of your ankles. Now, you can stay right there and hang, too. Or if you want to shift your hips down towards the ground, you can do that if it feels really good to you. So you find what works for you. And then we're going to rise our hips back up and bring our feet back underneath us. So let your feet come on back, hips distance apart and parallel. Couple of breaths here in your Uttanasana. Hold your elbows if you want. Let yourself release. And then we'll bring our hands to our hips. We're going to rise on up and inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down in front of our hearts. So go ahead and bring your chin down for a second. Look at your feet. If you need to adjust a little bit, do. So you feel like you have the feet fairly equal. And then on your next inhale, go ahead and bring your head on back, chin parallel to the floor. 
finding your mountain pose here now, finding that quiet strength of simply standing, feeling balanced and centered. But again, almost like you're supported by the air all around you. So it's very easy. There's an effortlessness about being in your mountain pose. And we're going to let our arms unfold on down beside us and shake out a little bit. Move around if you need to. We're going to bring our mats into a wall. So you can go right there. Sherman, you know where you're going. And, and we're going to come. <coughs> Let's grab a block. And you have a choice here about coming into Half Moon. There are enough space in the studio today. If everybody wants to do your back to the wall for your half moon, you can. Some of you might want to do foot to the back wall. So if you do want to come into your half moon with your back to the wall, right foot is your supporting foot, hand comes underneath your shoulder, you've got the right butt cheek really right there into the wall, and you can extend up from here into your half moon. Now those of you who'd rather go a little bit more into Working towards a balance or doing a balance, you can use the back wall for your foot if you'd rather do that so that you get yourself set up here with your back foot into the wall. Remember in half moon pose, the toes are coming a little bit away from the floor. The foot you're standing on is parallel to the wall or your mat if you're standing on your mat long ways. And you can decide if you want to let yourself press into the wall with your foot if you're there. If you've got your back to the wall, enjoy that. Let yourself feel supported there. Lengthening out through the spine. Big hip opener. Beautiful. One more breath. And then we're going to come on down. And we are going to go to the other side. So actually just switching sides is a big relief. But if you need to squat in between sides, do. Right? So take your time. I think most of us are on our left foot in here. So your supporting leg is par foot is parallel either to the edge of your mat or to the wall if you're at the wall there. And then take your time. Shifting your hand so you're putting your weight to the same hand that the foot is you're standing on. And then you can decide if you decide you want to come into your half moon opening up there, top arm coming up. And if you don't, don't do it. Keep your hands down and let yourself engage there where you are. Good. Flex through that back foot if you've got your foot, if you're at the wall there. Good. And then we're going to release. And let yourself come on down now. Toes back towards the wall behind you. Let your tips of your toes touch the wall. Come into child's pose. Now, if you want, you can stay forward. So if your hips are like, yeah, I'm not going back. I'm not shifting back all the way to my heels. Don't do it. If you can, you can shift all the way into child's pose. Let it be a resting child's pose. So let your arms be soft, whether they're overhead or back alongside your legs. Good. One more breath. And then bring your hands by your knees. Now, if standing on your knees is not a good thing, don't do this. Or if you want to grab a blanket. But if you can, come up to be on your knees, do. All right? If it's too much, just don't do this. Rest for a minute. Okay? And then let your hands come behind you and interlace your fingers. Slide your hands down a little bit. Think about not shifting back with your body, right? You're still really open here in the front of your hips in your camel pose. Now, if you want more, I mean, those of you who like to curl your toes under and think about reaching back farther you can, right? That is up to you. Let yourself find where you can be. Good. And then we'll come on back. We're going to come back down to the floor with our forearms, interlace our fingers, and clasp your hands, send your pinky fingers out, and see if maybe you want to lift up to a dolphin pose with your heels up the wall. 
pressing into your forearms. If you're not in the right place, come down and readjust. Let your forearms go closer to the wall or farther from. And then see if you can, if you want to lift one foot up the wall, do. Curling the toes under. And you can switch if you're doing that one leg. And when you're ready to rest, if you're not already resting, you go right ahead, come down, rest in child's pose. Or if you'd rather sit up, sometimes after being upside down, it feels better to get your head above your heart again. Do what feels good. And if you want to do a little more inverting, you're more than welcome to do that again and walk both feet up the wall if you want to. If you're done, be done, sit and rest. Rest in child's pose if you'd rather. If it feels good to come up again and walk up the wall again or maybe just stay in your dolphin pose let yourself be where you can Good. So when you're ready to rest, rest however feels good, sitting up if that's better, or resting in child's pose. And we're going to make our way all the way up and around to sitting from here. So... We're going to use our straps, so if you know that having a blanket underneath you is better, go ahead and get yourself with a blanket underneath you so that you're sitting up higher and get a hold of your strap. So if the blanket feels good, get yourself up higher. We're going to bring the strap onto the ball of our right foot. And take your time here. So... How you position your left leg is so up to you, right? Using a block, if your knee feels a little funny or your hip, lowering the foot down can make a huge difference, right? Or even like kind of bringing the foot away from the leg if your hip feels funny or your knee. Just be really mindful, right? Because when you do start coming into a forward bend, sometimes that changes totally how it feels in your, in your hip and your knee. So feel the right heel on the floor. Really press into the strap and look at your foot. Make sure you're not rolling to the outside or the inside of the foot. That's what the strap is good for, is being able to let yourself center there, heel drawing down. Inhale into a nice long back. And then as you exhale, bend your elbows. And you, I mean, you may only come forward a quarter of an inch, right? So take your time. You're coming forward from length. If it feels good to walk your hands down the strap more, and then when you exhale, you come a little more forward, you can gradually get your way maybe a little more forward. But don't push it. And when you get to this spot where you're like, oh my gosh, this is enough or too much, come back out of it a little bit. So you get to that edge, and then you maybe release back out of it so that the body's not fighting you. You're giving yourself time to adjust. And I know some of you will want to just keep on going and reach down to hold your foot. That's fine. Just keep the strap there if you can because we're going to keep using it. So let yourself come where you can be. Following your breaths all the way in and out. Good, one more breath here. And now keep the strap on your foot as you come on back up to sitting. And we're gonna open the leg out to the side. Now how far you go is up to you. And this again really affects this bent leg, right? So if you need, again, change the position of the foot. Use a block if you need. 
because we're going to think of coming into reaching our right hand down the strap closer to your foot, however close you can get, really. And you know how we did triangle and we were lengthened out? Kind of feel that for a second, like you're lengthening out over that right leg, almost like you're in triangle. And now bring that left arm up. Now, if you want to add side stretch where you're curving your spine, let the arm come down and let yourself release over towards that leg. And you might even want to put your left hand all the way to your right toes. That is a huge side stretch. You don't have to keep your left hip, your left bone, sitting bone down into the floor either. So if it floats up, sometimes that gives you a really deep side stretch that feels very good. But cautious, be cautious. So one more breath. And then we're going to slowly use your belly to bring you back up into sitting. And bring that leg on around. The strap helps you do that. So let your left foot just replace your right one in the strap. And now that right foot comes in again, below or above the knee. Support underneath if you need. So, you know, our knees and legs are different, different hips. So sometimes one side needs support, not the other. And then again, look at that left foot. So if you pull one end of your strap, then the other, you can tell all that movement you have in your ankle, right? Side to side. You want to be as even as you can, pushing into that strap with the ball of the, the big toe mound and the little toe mound, right? And then heel down, start to inhale into that length. And then as you exhale again, think of coming forward with as long a back as you can find. And then again, if gradually letting yourself, each time you inhale, lengthening, and exhale, maybe coming a little farther forward. But again, you're giving your body time to adjust here. And when you get to that edge, that place where you know it's too much, come back out of it and let yourself breathe. Sometimes after a few breaths, your leg gives up a little bit and you can go a little bit farther. So watching your breath, letting the breath help you. So one more full deep breath in and out. And then slowly again, rising on back out of that. And we're going to open the leg out again to the side. How far you go is up to you, adjusting this right leg. I mean, some people you can let yourself turn more to the top of that right foot if that's what your leg will do, your hip and your knee, right? Remember, we're going to slowly slide the hand down towards the foot, lengthening the torso out at first. So it's like you're coming into almost a triangle pose here, lengthening through both sides. And then add that top arm up, straight up from your shoulder. And now if you decide you want to lower it down and let yourself come on into a deeper side stretch, you can. Breathing into that side, that right side. Good. One more breath. And then again, slowly, and use your belly to help you. Come on back up into center. And let's bring both feet forward and keep the strap now across your both the balls of the feet and start to open wider. You know how far you go. Maybe you come to the ends of the strap. Oh, I got a short little strap here. So take your time. Let yourself press into the balls of the feet. Maybe you can think of coming a little bit forward. Just make sure your knees and your toes stay facing upward. Good. Nice. 
One more breath. And then we're going to slowly come up. Go ahead and put your strap off beside you here now. Stretch your legs on out. And let your hands come behind you. And now at first, turn your hands back to where you've got your hands turned out, maybe 45 degrees behind you so that your, your fingertips are facing more the back, the head of your mat there, but a little bit turned out. And then open the chest here. Let yourself just really enjoy. You can look up if that feels good. If you like stretching a little more through the throat and doesn't bother your neck to let your head come back to. And then come on back up. Turn your hands over so the backs of the hands just start to release downward and bow your head. Let yourself release there. And now we're going to come back. And now this time, you can decide if you want your fingers to face so the fingertips face the foot of your mat or go back to the way you were, right? Because we're going to think of lifting up our hips into reverse plank. So as you lift up, right, point your feet if you can. And it, you don't have to come up. If it doesn't feel good, stay down and let yourself open the chest like we just did. And then we're going to release. And again, as you come up, let the hands flip over and come forward just a little bit so that you, you're not pushing into your hands, but there's a little bit of extra as you come forward, a little extra release for the wrist. You just have the back of the hands into the floor there. Good. And then come on back up. Now, if you know rolling down onto your back is not good for you, don't do it. If you can bend your knees, bring your arms forward, and think about exhaling, curling your tailbone up, and rolling down through your spine. Now, you can always hold on behind your legs, right? So you get to this spot that's really hard. Sometimes if you use your hands a little bit, you can get through it more gently. And then rolling all the way on down. Once you get down, Bring your right knee into your chest. Extend your left leg down long. Flex through both your feet. And then bring the left knee in. Stretch the right leg down long. Flex through the feet. Feel the left leg gently coming into your hands. And then let both knees come in for a second and let the knees circle like we did early in class. So you have your right hand on your right knee, your left hand on your left. The knees are going to circle in one direction. And then they're going to stop and reverse and go the other direction. And then we'll bring our feet on down to the floor, setting up for a little bridge pose here. So how far your heels are away from your buttocks, you kind of get yourself set there where you think is good. Bring your arms on in beside you. Bend your elbows. Let your palms face each other. Spread your fingers, right? Press into the backs of the arms and roll your shoulders under more. Lift up and really roll under. And then go ahead and rise on up into your bridge. Once you get there, you can even get the elbows more under you if possible. Let the hands come wider apart if that feels good. And then see about lifting your heels up. Really get this sense of length both in the front and the back of your body. And feel the back of your head just gently coming into the floor. Now some of you might even want to slip your hands underneath your low back. Support your hips there with your hands. If that feels good, you can do it. You can even lower your heels down like that with your hands under you. And if that's not possible, don't worry about it. Don't do it. So take your time. You need to come down. You come down. If anybody would rather use a block, grab yourself a block or two and put the block any height underneath your low back and let yourself rest in supported bridge so that your back gets, instead of a lot of work, you're trying to find release in your low back. So only you know, after the class we just did, what's going to be best for you, right? Whether you want to be supported, maybe some of you want to come down and 
push up into a full upward facing bow pose. So if that sounds like a good idea, you can follow what feels like your body wants to do here now. Remember, you don't need to stay in bridge pose unless you choose to. You can come down anytime you want. Good. When you do make your way down, let yourself easily bring your knees in towards your chest. And then separate the knees. Let the soles of the feet come towards each other. Hands can come to the shins or the ankles. If you feel good to wrap your hands around the outside edges of your feet, do so the feet totally come together. All right, but that is not necessary to get a release in your hips and your low back. So just take your time. Let it feel like a huge release here. Inner thighs, the low back, the hips. And now start to just, instead of me telling you what to do right now, start to let your body do exactly what it might want, right? And that could be anything at all. You know, there might be another pose or another movement you want to do here. You may need another twist here on your back if you feel like bringing both knees over one side to the other or bringing one knee in and across. Or you may need to do a plow pose. You may need to let yourself come into another movement for your body. So instead of thinking too hard, let your body adjust to do what it needs. And if you're like, there's nothing else I want to do. I just want to be in Shavasana then by all means, let yourself do that. But I'm going to walk around a little bit here in the studio to see if maybe some people might want a bolster. Once you start to settle down, don't rush. Wave at me if you think you might want some support. A bolster underneath your knees. If you... At first, think you're fine, and then you stretch out, and you go, oh, no. Then just raise up your hand. We'll figure out something to do to help you. If you need a little bit of a blanket underneath the back of your head. But just now, enjoy feeling yourself back on the floor like we started. Feeling the back body into the ground. Really just let yourself feel the sense of releasing from your hands all the way up through your arms into your shoulders. And releasing through the feet all the way up through the legs into your hips. And then give yourself time. The breath will calm the mind and the body. And yes, you start thinking. You come back to your breath. It comes in these little waves of quietness. So if you can, just let yourself keep returning your awareness to your breath. Giving your body and your brain time to benefit from all you just did. Letting yourself completely and fully relax.
gradually now. Let yourself feel the breath wanting to come in and go out more fully, more deeply again. Really letting those deeper breaths start to bring physical movement back, feeling your belly rising and falling. Letting the deeper breaths bring you back gradually into feeling yourself there on the ground again. Wiggling fingers and toes when you feel ready to move. Let your extremities lead you, your hands, your feet. You might want to circle your hands and feet around a little bit, coming up into your arms and legs when you're ready. If it feels good to let your head roll a little side to side, be mindful, let yourself come back to moving gently however feels good for you. And you know you're welcome to stay on your back or to roll to either your right or your left side anytime. If that feels good to you to come into a soft fetal position on your side to give your body and your brain a little time to adjust. And of course, when you do feel like you're all right to rise up to sitting, see if you can let yourself feel like almost you're floating your way up. So you feel very relaxed still. Sitting however is comfortable so that you feel yourself evenly placed between your sitting bones there. And then once your head is up there on top, just feel that lightness of your head floating up there. Feel the top of the head just gently reaching upward. Lots of space in your spine. And on your next exhale, let your hands come gently to meet there in front of your chest, in front of your own heart. And wishing each one of you a very joyful day. Namaste. Happy Friday. Friday before Thanksgiving. <laughs>